Dr. Karp, could you please explain what is the osteoporosis and what causes it? Well, I'm glad you asked, Riza, and I know you're familiar with this, but fundamentally osteoporosis uh, means an increased risk of having a low trauma fracture. So the, 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 the long name that was developed really back in the uh, uh, late 80s is that osteoporosis is a systemic condition. It affects the entire skeleton, characterized by decreased bone mass and impaired bone quality. And together, the decrease in bone mass and the impairment of bone quality lead to an increased risk of fracture. So fundamentally, osteoporosis is appropriately diagnosed as a patient who has an increased risk of getting a fracture. And this is separate from trauma, obviously. The energetic young man who's jumping out of trees and crashing his car gets fractures. That's not what we're talking about here. We're not talking about traumatic fractures. We're talking about the low impact fractures that really characterize uh, osteoporosis. So osteoporosis is an increased risk of getting a fracture and it usually develops when there is something which has degraded the material properties of the bone. Most commonly, it is loss of the enzyme estradiol, the, the hormone estradiol, which unfortunately in the modern era happens to half the population because it turns out that estradiol in women and in men plays a very key role in keeping the rate of bone turnover uh, uh, under control. Our bones do more than support our muscles and Act, act as a sink for calcium. The bones are living, breathing organs, just like the liver and the spleen and the skin. And the main types of cell in the bone, because it's providing material structure, it has to be renewed. So there's osteoclasts, bone resorbing cells, osteoclasts, which very quickly will remove some bone. And that is coupled to another type of cell, a bone forming osteoblast, which replaces the bone that was removed by the osteoclast. And this process of the initial and faster removal of bone by osteoclastic bone resorption, followed by the subsequent and slower replacement of bone by osteoplastic bone formation is what's referred to as bone remodeling or bone turnover. Estradiol keeps a lid on bone turnover. And that's very, very important because pretty much everything we know that causes osteoporosis from the most common loss of estrogen to too much parathyroid hormone, too much thyroid hormone, too much vitamin A, high dose steroids, immobilization. The way that these cause increased fracture risk is they take the lid off bone turnover, bone turnover goes up, osteoclastic resorption goes up, and because they're coupled, osteoblastic bone formation goes up. But in every case we've seen where bone turnover rate goes up, resorption goes up more than formation does. So whereas normally you've got a formation matching resorption, in a high turnover state, such as estrogen deficiency at menopause, bone formation is up, but bone resorption is even higher, which means that every single remodeling unit on your skeleton, 10 to 15 million of those remodeling units in a high turnover state, you've got negative bone balance. Less bone is being formed than is being removed. And that's what produces really the impairment of bone quality, which makes the bone less resistant to fracture. And wouldn't you say that the main reason why this matters is because of the fact that for men and women over the age of 50, for women, they have a one in two chance of having an osteoporotic fracture. And for men, it's about a one in four chance. So the whole goal here is to keep this bone, which is living tissue, people don't think about that as being living tissue, healthy, and to basically try to prevent that first fracture. That is right, that is right, Risa. And the reason why there's a, a, a twofold difference in the fracture risk between men and women, the biggest driver of that, both genders will have some age-related loss of bone mass. But women at average age of 50 lose their estradiol, whereas the average man does not lose his estradiol coming from his testosterone. So that, that's the biggest driver for the difference in osteoporotic fractures between the two genders. I mean, if you think about it logically, um, Estradiol does so many, many things in humans. And why would somebody design a system where half the population loses this important hormone halfway through life? Well, the reason is even going back to 1900, the average lifespan in the US was like 48. So it's only recently that with, with the advancements, with, with fighting infectious diseases and the average age getting up into 80, 90, 100, et cetera, that 
half the population can expect to live half their life missing this key hormone. So it really is kind of a modern uh, disease. I mean, loss of estrogen in menopause is the biggest driver of the differential in osteoporotic fractures between men and women.